Hey everyone, how are you? And uh, how many of you ever wanted to play for your country's national team? I ask this because I know when I was a kid, and I know I virtually pretty much had no shot of playing for either one, whether it was Colombia or the U.S. How many of you truly and sincerely, if today you know you have the ability, you know you have the capability, and you get called up one day and, and they say, hey, you know what? You will be on the national team. They don't say a starter. They don't say as a reserve. They don't say as anything. Okay. The chances are up to you. But if you have that opportunity, that chance, how many of you are willing to go and do whatever it takes to have that chance? Knowing that it will be there if you do what you're told. Raise your hands. I know I would because I'm raising my hand right now. I'll tell you that right right here and now. If I ever had that chance, if I were to do things all over again and I had that opportunity, you are damn sure I'm going to do everything I possibly can to get to that point. Because only elite players, only the elite players get there. And you're, if you're elite, you will be considered for a national team spot within your country. Let's not... Start saying, well, no, not the best. No, no, no. The best are chosen. Maybe not the absolute best, but the best among what there is available will always be chosen for a national team. Whether it's Gold Cup, whether it's Wooden Spoon, whatever, wherever it's a World Cup, whatever tournament you are looking at and you have to deal with a national team setting, the best of the best are chosen. You can disagree with who gets chosen. You can disagree with who plays in that position. You can disagree with a whole lot of things, but we can all come to an agreement on that. And if you are considered within those best, you want to be in that group. Now, there's some that look at it from a different perspective because if they don't play, then it's not fair and they don't want to and they'll go and cry and everything else. Well, that's the case with Adrian Rabiot and, and, and it's frustrating. And Sandro Wagner, we can throw him into the mix too as well. But with Adrian Rabiot, his, his specific gripe is that he thought he should be a starter. That he should be a player that should be started by Didier Deschamps. Does he have the arguments? Absolutely. Now, does he have the willingness and commitment? It doesn't appear like that is the case. Because if you, were, if you do know that, and you are on the outside looking in, you make sure that you're as close to the outside as close to the inside as possible from the outside. Make sure that you make Didier Deschamps' life so miserable that he has no other choice but to choose you. And he is still a rather young player compared to the other players that he chose. Yes, he did take Blaise Matuidi's spot over at PSG. Yes, he did that, absolutely. And he does have the quality. There's no argument about that. But the personal commitment. Again, one of the big problems with PSG was that. The fact that it was a lot of individuals and very few that are willing to do the collective work to make things happen. That was the problem with PSG. And of course, that was focused solely on Neymar because, of course, Neymar, whenever he comes to town, whenever he's in a specific city, he does steal a lot of headlines. He does get a lot of the attention. He does garner a lot of the spotlight. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the things why Rabio was kind of not seen and, and kind of upset and, and looked like he wasn't all there. At times, he's had his little hissy fits. He's had his little temper tantrums before with PSG. Now, is that a byproduct of his, of his mother as, as not just his mother in a supportive role, but the representative, the agent that is his mother as well? Does that make it all that much better? Probably not. Now, you don't know how that relationship, how that dynamic works behind closed doors but the indications have been that she was one of those that always said hey you're you're a great player you're phenomenal you're this you're the best you're this and, that. and it's it's good to say that and it's always good to support and reinforce and everything else but it comes to a point that, that how is it being reinforced is it reinforced where you're kind of making it a little more delusional that he is that good which he is mind you he's a very good player but is he better than what's out there and what's available? 
That to me is the bigger question. That to me is a big, even bigger aspect of this particular gripe. This is what really needs to be looked at because obviously Didier Deschamps is a person that does not mince his words. What he says he means and what he means he says. He's not one of those individuals that's going to really make things very cloudy or uncertain or however you want to look at it from that perspective. He is an individual that is going to tell you exactly how things are. He's a very transparent individual. Now you start looking at Matuidi, you start looking at Toliso, you start looking at all these types of players that come in. France is loaded. And if you are out of that list at 23, that's not a sin. That just means that you have to start working on a couple of things here and there. And you start looking at what Pogba and Kante and, of course, Rabiot when he was able to play. And you start looking at you know, individuals of that nature. When you start looking at Matuidi and you start looking at other players that really come through and really start to show what they can do, they're willing to do it for the team. And there's certain things that that Deschamps saw in certain matches that he did not like. He did not like the lack of intensity that was missing, albeit it was a friendly, mind you. That 3-2 loss to Colombia was one that really crawled under the skin of Didier Deschamps. That was one of those moments that he was not happy with the performance of many. One of the performances happened to be of Adrien Rabiot. But to go and say, I'm not going to play, I don't want to be part of the team if I don't start, that's spoiled brat youth soccer stuff that you see on Saturday mornings. That is a big problem when you start dealing with someone like that. That is the reason why he's not on the squad. But that's forgivable if he's willing to do the work. People don't mind a complainer. People don't mind the complainer if the complainer comes in and works hard and justifies his complaints by saying, hey, this is what I'm doing and this is what I'm willing to do and this is how I'm doing the things that I'm willing to do and going beyond the things that I'm willing to do to make things happen for me and for the entire team. For me and for the good of the team. For the good of the team and the good of the individuals that make up the team. But Rabiot wasn't willing to do that. Rabiot wasn't willing to go in that extra mile and say, okay, coach, I'll be ready. And you call me. And as soon as something happens, I am ready to go at a moment's notice. It was more of a desire of wanting to go. And mind you, he's within his right. As a professional footballer, with the amount of games that you play, with the grind of a professional season, you are within your right to go and say no. You wouldn't be the first one and he wouldn't definitely be the last one to to go and and take that route but you know what as soon as you do you better be aware that there is going to be consequences and in Rabio's case the consequence is an immature decision it was a whim it was something that was really a major problem for him and now he's paying the price Hey guys, thank you for listening and I just really wanted to ask you one favor. Make sure you go onto iTunes and uh, subscribe. Subscribe to BTP Daily, but also subscribe to Beyond the Pitch. As Phil and I are going to give you and we're surely going to do our best to bring the best personalities, pundits, players, coaches, pretty much the best of the best in the world of football to you so you can listen to their stories and many other things that they do bring up. Also, make sure that you you review what you listen to. They leave a review on iTunes and on any other platform that you can leave a review. Remember, yeah, one star is okay. We know we need to do better. Five stars, of course, we love you to death. But uh, make sure you do that. Make sure you stay up to date. Make sure you follow myself on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter, I should say. At Juan G underscore Arango, you go over on Instagram, Juan G Arango, you go to my 
YouTube page at The Normal Juan. And you subscribe there as I'll be cranking it out during the World Cup and during many other events this summer on all my platforms. So make sure that you are all over the place with Phil and I on Beyond the Pitch.